Hello and greetings from Iceland, but today's video is all about my colorful journey that started two days ago as I was trying to time my trip to Reykjavik well, not too early, so I wouldn't have to waste some time waiting for something to occur and not too late, so I wouldn't miss anything and as I was on my way, driving 500 kilometers, I heard it in the radio that scientists had figured out that the magma dike was at 1.3 kilometers depth and smoke had been seen coming up from the ground close by the old crater since 2021 and that made me a bit hot as well so instead of going to Reykjavik I drove straight to Grindavik because I wanted to see this smoke coming up from the ground but it was getting dark so the image quality shows that but uh, I didn't care it was also very windy so my drone was struggling and I didn't go further because uh, I have never used a drone in such wind so I was lucky to get it back and uh, I didn't see anything more than I had noticed on the webcams and as I was browsing through the comment section on my channel someone mentioned that there was this flares showing in the webcams but I didn't do another flight because the coast guard helicopter was there the police and the rescue squads and everything but by that time it was three o'clock in the night too late to find a hotel so I parked by the seaside because I knew I would see the glowing skies from there if the eruption would start that night but I think I only managed to sleep for like one, two hours in my car when an earthquake woke me up, bit over magnitude four, and that meant only one thing, bacon and eggs in Reykjavik. So I drove there, got my daily dose of strong morning calories, and uh, from there I drove to Mount Keilir, because it is the region between Mount Keilir and Keldikandalir, where the eruption took place last year, that we expected to see the eruption come up. So I was also thinking this might be the last images shot of this landscape as it looks now. And it is beautiful around there, so I took three flights and finished all three batteries. And while at it, around four or five earthquakes struck nearby, some of them around uh, magnitude four, and it was not comfortable because uh, I knew that the eruption was about to come up somewhere around there. So I was a bit relieved when I drove back to the Reykjanes Highway between Reykjavik and Keflavik International Airport. And as I got down there and looked south, I could notice something in the sky. Took off my Nikon and the 500mm lens and shot this. Turned on the radio and knew it uh, instantly that the eruption had started. So I drove straight to Grindavík, took me around 20-30 minutes. And did a trip with the drone, drove back to Grindavík to upload it as the first images from a new eruption. I sat down in a little coffee shop by the pier, uploaded the video and uh, went back. And I did uh, two other flights, but the location is uh, further away from the south coast road than last time. So this is out of range for any regular drone. And especially when it's windy, well, on the Reykjanes Peninsula, it is always windy there. And overall, I was just trying to uh, figure out this uh, situation, especially how it looks for tourists. But the civil defense could detect around 7,000 uh, mobile phones around there yesterday. So the tourists came flocking in even though it was forbidden to go up there yesterday. They still came, but it's all open now. The stocks in Icelanders are up, and this is most likely the best kind of tourist eruption. It is believed that it is around five to ten times more powerful than the eruption last year, but this is so new that I'm sure that the fissure will change in some way in the next days and weeks. We might even see more openings, and uh, it's also noticeable that the place where the smoke was coming up from the ground before the eruption started. It's not there. You can see that in this video. That is a separate uh, location and it's still smoking there. So we might even see a new opening there. But the thing is that it is harder to visit this place than the eruption last year. It's around 17 kilometers hike and it's a rocky road. So one person broke a leg yesterday, meaning that this is not for uh, all and uh, the authorities are telling people not to take their kids with them. This is simply too much for them. And uh, I was thinking about the hike up there last night, but uh, so I ruled it out also because uh, I did not know what this fisher was about to do. I just felt it a bit uh, risky, but I did do this uh, second flight and I will do another video soon about the routes up there or the options we have. So I have uh, no close-ups for you today, but uh, there are plenty of them online already. And this is how the gas pollution looks from a bit further away. So I was moving around on the way back to Reykjavik, but I was totally worn out. So I didn't do any midnight photography last night. 
after uh, being awake for almost uh, 48 hours. I think I slept uh, one or two hours in a car. But uh, I did get some of the first footage and I was very pleased to get the timing uh, so good. And what will I do next about this on my channel? And it's simple. I'm going to do my best and uh, I have both more experience and better uh, equipment than I had last year. So I will be doing my work from my own angles as uh, back then, like with the maps and uh, tourist tips. And I will be staying here in the south for some time now. There are many good webcams up and running now, so I can't add anything to that. And uh, most of the photographers are into the red stuff, so I will be aiming more at the wider angles, but I will of course hike up there uh, very soon. But uh, I think I have to get somebody to go with me this time, because uh, my camera bag is uh, very heavy with the tripod and my 500mm lens. And uh, since last year I've added the drone, and uh, I've also been... Uh, looking at the maps for some uh, different locations to be shooting and uh, it will be the more different angles that I will be going after not the same stuff that everyone else is uh, publishing at least I'm gonna try that then I might offer some services in regards of helping uh, those who are planning a trip around there to plan journeys around the peninsula because I know that part of Iceland uh, very well and I'm getting to know it better by the day now and there is more to this region than just this volcano. And uh, I have also been thinking about uh, if I should do live broadcasts through YouTube. And I was just this morning uh, looking up information about how to do live broadcasts from the drone. So I might uh, go into that direction as well. Also because I cannot do sound recording in the same environment I'm used to do them. As I will be a lot on the road. So... Overall, I'm thinking about that my channel will be a good uh, resource of information for tourists who are going around and uh, mix the information with my own footage so it will be pleasant to watch. Because uh, a volcanic eruption to watch this uh, close by is something that you will never forget. This is so a powerful event in so many ways. A feast for the eyes and the soul. But uh, we have to do it right. So it uh, won't be a feast for uh, those who make fun at uh, tourists running into troubles like this car I found uh, yesterday doing uh, illegal off-road driving or something that we really don't like here in Iceland. But uh, anyway, let's just uh, enjoy this, make the most of it and with that I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.